golf to me has just been it's been fun it's um, it's a kind of uh, sport that you can play forever uh, which some of us are and um, it will it will be in my heart until until I die <laughs> I'm born in 61, but I find out just a few weeks ago that in 1957, my dad went with Gary and some other Ontario golfers for a Florida vacation. So uh, for the first time ever, we're sharing that story right here on social media. The thing I remember about Jim is we ended up at um, Riviera Country Club in, in uh, Daytona Beach, and um, he was... Uh, he played a number of times there, but he was on his way home. And um, my other two friends had uh, a little problem uh, um, at the border, or working at, and uh, they had to sort of leave early. Uh, so that meant that I was sort of by myself. So. And you're 17 years old at the time, as I yeah, as I know yeah, the story. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I said uh, Jim was coming coming back uh, to Canada and I said, is there any chance I can get a ride with you? So anyway, the three of us came back to, uh, to Canada and um, that's how I got to know Jimmy Maxwell. Now tell us about your own story of, of going to the Masters and I, I'd love it if you could share, Gary, when the letter shows up and inviting you to Augusta. When I won the Canadian Amateur in 71, in 61, I knew that I would be invited to the Masters because that's the way it went back then. You know, I was delighted and, and, and so on, but I had already um, lost to the finals of the Canadian Amateur in 59 and 60. So, uh, you know, I, I was pretty good player back then. I, I, had a, I, had, I went down to practice for about a month before the tournament, so that was played in, in a couple of little small tournaments uh, and so on. But when, when you get to Augusta, it's a, it's a whole new game. And uh, I remember playing with uh, Horton Smith in, in one of the rounds. And uh, he, um, I'll never forget, whenever he putted, if it wasn't in the hole, it would be six inches all around the hole. That was one of the things that I remember. You brought up the name Arnold Palmer. Is there a way you can describe Arnie's impact on the game uh, in terms of what it did opening up the doors commercially? Uh, it's been said that Palmer created the entire celebrity endorsement industry, that if it wasn't for Arnold Palmer, there would be no LeBron James or Michael Jordan with these huge endorsement contracts, but from your perspective, from someone who played in the 50s and 60s, just as golf was coming of age, uh, how do you assess the impact of Arnold Palmer? Well, I, I think I can explain that, that, that Mark McCormick was the one that got Arnold into all of the uh, investment stuff and so on, because he became a manager for him, and it actually ended up, he became a manager for Mark McCormick for uh, Gary Player and Jack Nicklaus, so he had three of them. So he he made, I think he made all of the boys, Palmer, Nicholas, and, and Player, uh, rich people because of getting going in that. And that lifted the sport. Absolutely, though. absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Arnold Arnold and, and his army was a start of it, and. Uh, Arnold was just uh, a different kind of person, let's and, put it that way. And you played with Arnold? Once or twice. Yeah. Or and, 10 or 20. <laughs> and there's a story from, uh, at the age of 52, you went, actually got your seniors PGA Tour card, competed with Arnold Palmer, I believe, in a round. You made the cut and he didn't. Yeah, uh, well, that was that was actually when that was the last um, 
that was the last time I, I, I was an amateur. That was the um, uh, senior open at um, in New Jersey, and uh, I, I I made the cut, and he didn't. But I played with him for two rounds, and we uh, we talked a little bit, and he kept telling me, Gary, what am I doing wrong? And I just said, you got to start hitting it. You're hitting it like a uh, like a wimp, and he started to hit it and played better. <laughs> Arnold Palmer is asking you for golf lessons. Well, that's right. Gary, there's so many people you would have met during your career. Um, who stands out in terms of personalities that the public doesn't necessarily know a whole lot about these days, but you recall very fondly? Well, there's, I mean, I've known Jack Nicholas for uh, since 1956, so that's a long time. And uh, we played uh, some uh, amateur golf together, and then uh, when he turned pro and, and, and so on. Uh, um, but he was a really wonderful player and, and also a great guy. And uh, not too many people, years, years back, I thought he was, you know, he was a different person kind of thing, but he, he was, he would do anything I asked for as an example. And um, he was just a wonderful person. And I got to know Gary Player a little bit, but uh, being a, being a, you know, uh, from from the other, another country kind of thing, but I would just see him at Augusta. And then I saw him a little bit um, when I turned pro. and. And he was a good, good fella too. But I think Jack and, and Arnold were probably the best that there was. How do you want to be remembered? I want to rem be remembered as a good person who um, who played uh, a, a good game of golf and who was also uh, uh, a good businessman. And I'll leave it at that. Gary Cowan, I uh, can't thank you enough for this. We met on Facebook. We're in a yeah. private Facebook group. Yeah. And Gary reached out uh, when I was asking about uh, something about my father. And yeah. uh, sure enough, uh, that's how we connected on social media. And uh, it's an honor to meet you finally in person and have this conversation. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Thank you.